It's Brian Preston, the money guy. <laughs> this one is from, from Financial Princess. Uh, so we're talking royalty here. If my husband and I are already saving 25% toward retirement, uh, but have not maxed out our 401ks, are we okay to start contributing to an after-tax brokerage account and our son's 529 account, right? So this is what they're saying. Hey, we, uh, we're we already doing the 25%, but it hasn't gotten us to the point to where we're maxing out both of the retirement plans yet. So we haven't moved on to an after-tax account, but we are hitting the 25% number. How do you counsel someone to think through that? And is that an okay time to start building up college assets or should they focus on that third bucket? Like what would the foo tell them to do as they're kind of thinking through that? Yeah, this is a great question. I will tell you, this answer is going to be very specialized to financial princess to a degree because this is a unique situation because it is very common. If you go to moneyguy.com slash resources, download the nine steps of the financial order operations, learn.moneyguy.com if you want the deeper dive course. And we do cover this in the course. Uh, we do. Is that there is we step six is max out retirement. So you're like, wow, why why do they because as as financial princess is bringing up Man, if I'm saving 25%, but because I'm in a lower income situation, I've reached 25%, but I didn't hit the, is it 20,500? You know, yeah, 20, this year it's 20,500. So if I haven't reached 20,500 in my 401k. It seems crazy that I'm at hyper accumulation of over 25%, but I'm still not saving for the kids. But is it okay to move past the retirement? For most people, because most people, I think, will come to have incomes, especially if you're buying the financial order of operations Mm -hmm. course and you're a financial mutant, you probably do make, and I think we've done the calculation on this, it was around Mm $80,000 or something like that. I think that's right. You know, I don't want you to walk past retirement without definitely measuring twice Mm -hmm. to make sure it makes sense to move on. But for Financial Princess, it sounds like her and her spouse are doing a lot with a little. I mean, to get 25% on an income that is low enough that you can get to 25% and still not reach the 20500 in your 401k, kudos for being true financial mutants and being part of that stat because there's a large percentage of millionaires that never make $100,000 right. a year. I think it's around a third of millionaires never make over $100,000 a year. If my data's serving me correctly, so for financial princess, you are spot on. If you are, if you if you're in a situation where 25 percent of your income takes you, because that's what step six is: max out retirement with the understanding that we're really trying to get you to 25 percent for the hyper accumulation. And if you're doing that, you can move on to step eight. And here's why: because a lot of people say, "Well, how can you have an exception to the rule?" And here's why: if you're in an income situation where you're making less than eighty thousand dollars a year, saving 25 percent. Realize you're kind of grounded to a lot of the social safety net of retirement. You probably go have Social Security's go cover a large portion of it. You know, you'll have, you know, insurance through Medicare and things like that when you retire. You can do a lot with a little. You're showing that you're very disciplined with your lifestyle. It's crazy for you not to go ahead and start saving for the kids, for saving for the the good vacations and doing those type of things, because you've already shown that you're respecting the discipline of the situation. But it is one of those things as you make more money. This is why people ask me all the time, Brian, is it okay if I count my employer's match in that 25% figure? I'm like, yeah, as long as your household income is less than $200,000, sure, count the employer match. But the more money you make, the more responsibilities fall on your shoulder, and Financial Princess is rocking it. I mean, that, that's I incredible, awesome. and um, I, that's a very specialized answer because for the vast majority of people, especially if you're making six figures as a household, you're probably going to reach the point where you can max out your retirement before you move on to hyperaccumulation. Mm-hmm. But for Financial Princess, she found that sweet spot. And I do think if you are someone, because I, I don't think it said your age in here, as you do get closer to, you know, within, like, you can kind of see the retirement uh, or financial independence time horizon coming up. That's not a bad time to get a second opinion, right? So you might want to think about, what, okay, how much do I need to have in my tax buckets? How much should I be saving to those so that when I retire, if I am someone who's retiring at 50 or 52 or 57 or 62, there are different ways to think about that. That's not a horrible time to think about taking the relationship to the next level, 
depending on your unique and specific circumstance. You just said something, you know, because somebody who is this disciplined, you probably are purpose driven into the fact that some of these people sound like fire. Sure. Individuals yeah. who are tr- they j- jumping out of the workforce at 50, 55, you know, anytime before 65 years of age. If you're jumping out early like that, it is going to be very important that you have that bridge account to cover, you know, because if you're before 15 and a half, it gets harder to get access to some of those retirement accounts. So having that after tax brokerage account, like Financial Prince has talked mm-hmm. about, Super powerful. So once again, kudos Love it. for for being so disciplined and being successful. 